Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand how to build a regression model. Step by step is what we are going to teach and still now what we have learned is what linear regression is all about. Uh, how do we use R square? Uh, how do we uh, go with standard error uh, finding? All those processes have been explained clearly mathematically. Now it is time to build a regression model and we will have to follow certain steps without any missing. And please make a note of it if you have a notepad ready. It's better that you make a note of all these steps so that you can try it out without any flaw in your machine. What is the first step? First step is all about data. The data is the new fuel and data is all about collecting useful information which can be further processed and it is going to be the fundamental for or it is going to be the platform towards laying the uh, further system clear. So uh, it is not easy actually to collect all the data and multiple systems are there in place by multiple companies actually. Many organizations are working on many different methods to collect meaningful data because the data is going to be the uh, most important stuff towards developing any model and the data is all about uh, collecting the dependent versus independent uh, variables uh, content uh, for you to analyze it. So for example, uh, we can collect data about placement of BTEC students after the engineering degree completion in the country. That's what we are going to take up with. Uh, we are going to collect data about the engineering students and their CGPA and what is the role does it play towards getting their salary or placement. So the first step is to collect data from various resources. So what is the second step? Uh, the data is all ready with us, but let's take a simple example. We have bought vegetables from the uh, market and the vegetables cannot be uh, right away cooked, right? We need to clean it. We might have to remove the insects, dust or whatever uh, from it has to be removed so that it is uh, consumable. Same is the case here. When I collect data, there could be missing data. Accuracy could be an issue there. Reliability could be an issue there. There could be outlays. There could be repetition. All these are to be removed. Because if I have any of these mistakes, like outliers should be definitely uh, properly uh, removed and uh, missing data should be uh, considered and uh, appropriate actions to be taken. Accuracy is very important as well. If there is a repetition of data for the same entry, it is going to be a problem as well. So we need to look in into uh, the methods that can avoid or curtail all these problems and uh, that is called as pre-processing. So the first step is collecting the data. The second step is to pre-process the data which means getting the data ready for it to be processed further. That's the second step. Now, what is the third step? It is nothing but the training and the validation data set. I have the vegetables to be split now. I have bought the vegetables from the market. So what I will do, I will have to split the vegetables like some are uh, raw, uh, some are to be consumed raw. For example, carrot I can consume raw, but some are to be cooked and consumed. Likewise, we will have a pattern to uh, collect it in different boxes, right? Same is the case here. When I have the data, I need to now split it into training and validation data set. What is training data set? It is going to help us in training the system and validation is to be done appropriately as well and for that we need data. So normally 80% would be the training data set and 20% would be the validation data set and uh, this need not be strictly followed. I am again saying you, uh, it can be 75, 25 or it can be 70, 30 but remember one point, better you train, the better the results you get. So the third step is the data division for training and validation. What are the first step? The first step is to collect the data the second step is to pre-process the data. The third step is to split the data as the training data set and validation data set. Remember, this is the third step. Now, what is the fourth step? The fourth step is to analyze and to explore. Okay, sir, we have got data. We need to understand and visualize how exactly the data is looking like. Sometimes when we visualize, we can understand things better. We can spot outlays better. We can understand the relationship between the variables better when we plot it. So we have learned about how to use box plot, how to use histogram, how to use scatter plot, all these things I have taught you in my previous sessions where we can see visually the relationship between the X and Y. We can see uh, the things very clear and the understanding can be brought in very nicely when you analyze and explore. This is called the data exploration. I am going to explore the data in the fourth step. The first step was to collect the data. The second step is to get it pre-processed. The third step is to split them as training and validation data set. The fourth step is to analyze and to explore. Now, the most important step of model building is going to happen here. What is it? Model building. We are going to build the model. OLS, we have heard of this term already and I have taught you this mathematically as well. Ordinary least square. We have used this least square method in the mathematical explanation that I have given some time back in my previous session or session before that. And I'm going to use that OLS extensively for me to develop a model here. 
OLS with OLS, we are going to build the model and we are going to develop the model. And once the model is developed with OLS, uh, which means again, the ordinary least squares, uh, we need to make sure that the fundamental necessary diagnostics are performed with the developed model. What is it, sir? I'll let you know about it when we are developing the model. So wait till then. Now, what is the sixth step? The sixth step is nothing but the validation and the accuracy check. You are a batsman. You are uh, trained to bat well with the spinners and speedsters. Uh, you are very good with those two. Now, if there is a slow medium or a googly ball getting bowled, you should still bat that, right? You cannot say that I am trained only for uh, speed bowling or I am trained only for spinners. Yeah, that's the same case here. The model should be performing well within the training set and also away from it. You need to be creating, you need to create a system that really uh, withstands and it, 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 it could really work fine. So that's what is the model validation. I need to make sure that the validation is properly done and it should respond to the input properly and it should predict things properly. So this is the sixth step. What is the seventh step? Deploy it. I'm going to show it how do we deploy it as well. So what is the first step? We collected the data. Second step, pre-processed it. Third step, we split it into training and validation. The fourth step, exploration. Fifth step, we built the model and necessary diagnosis have been done. And after the validation, we have to deploy the model. That's it. We have completed the theoretical part of it. Now, what are we going to do, sir? We are going to do it practically by creating a data set as well as we are going to develop it step by step. Now, I have created a data set where I have serial number as the first column, uh, CGPA as the second column, salary as the third column. This can be uh, percentage as well. So when I uh, tried it with CGPA, the results were uh, okay. But again, when I uh, made it to percentage, it was much more easier for me to process. So it is better that you make it 95, 94, 93, 92.2, something like that. But again, this will also work. Shouldn't be a greatest problem there. Now, what do we have? We have the data set where serial number, CGPA or percentage, salary is there. Now, the name of the data set is data underscore ridge dot CSV. I have saved it as CSV. That's the first step that you need to remember. Now, we need to start coding. And yes, we are going to use the same anaconda. We have to import pandas as PD, numpy as NP. Now, what do we do? We are setting the limit for the decimal values. We have chosen five digit precision here. You can see that it is five digit pressure and the line with this 120. So I have set the print options clearly with NumPy as NP here. Now it is set. Now what is the next step? I need to create the data frame. How do we create data frame? I have taught you this clearly earlier. This name of the data frame can be GPA underscore sal underscore DF equal to PD. What is PD? Pandas. Pandas dot read underscore CSV. And the path of the file is completely given. Now this would have gotten the uh, DF, the data frame clearly generated. And I'm going to read it through clearly. First 10 values I'm trying to print to see if things are proper. GPA underscore sal underscore DF dot head of 10. When I put head of 10, the first 10 values would eventually be printed. And that's what is happening here. And you can validate here. Again, I'm telling you, I have changed it as percentage in my final entry, which you can try it out in your machine later. Now, we need to see all the meta information of the data set. This is not a mandatory step again. If you want to do, you do it. That's a good thing to do because you can understand what kind of data set we have and uh, everything will be very clear out there. Now, how do you do it? Very simple. GPA underscore sal underscore DF. This is the name of the data frame dot info. When you use this dot info, this gets you the complete information of the data set that we have. You can see that it it, it is a, a data frame type. The uh, File type is nothing but the data frame. We have got 25 entries here totally. 0 to 24 are the entries. All these are available here very clearly. This is just to let you know that what are all the things available. Now, what do we do now? We are getting into the core part of it where we are going to create X and Y. That is nothing but the feature set and the outcome. We need certain libraries to do it. And first thing is OLS. What is OLS? Ordinary least squares. This is an API that is made available in stats model library. So what do we need to do? We need to obviously import it and with that only we can do any further processing. Now OLS is used for estimation of parameters for regression. I have taught you how to use this in the previous session. So please go to it if you do not understand. OLS is nothing but ordinary least squares method. Now the data set is very clear for us. The OLS is also very clearly going to handle only the X and Y. X can be percentage or GPA. Y is going to be salary. We are going to uh, use OLS completely, but there is one major problem there with OLS. 
OLS can calculate or estimate only the coefficient for x. Remember, OLS can only estimate the coefficient for x. So what happens to y? We need actually b0, which is nothing but y equal to b0 plus b1 dot x, where b0 is there. I have mathematically calculated b0 by drawing a table there in the previous sessions, and I explained you how exactly to do it also. Now, we need to add a constant 1. Remember, this is a very important step. Most of us cannot understand it right in the first shot, so I'll repeat it a couple of times. We need to add a constant as one more column in the data set because an intercept is not included by default, and this is going to be used as an intercept for the processing to be complete. Remember, we have not had any intercept column in the data set. So we are having an intercept included here as a constant, and that's what is being done here. Now, how do we do it? Import statmodels.api as SMS. I imported it as SMS. Now, x is equal to SMS dot add underscore constant, GPA underscore sal underscore difference. I have added now a constant here, and I'm displaying the content for the first five. So the first five, is now getting displayed. Y equal to GP underscore sal underscore GF of salary. Now Y is also assigned. This part is to be very clear. So please understand we are adding a constant just to make sure that it is acting as an intercept and you will have to manually add it to make sure that there is no problem in the process. Now, what do we do? We need to now split the training set into test training set and validation training set. So uh, again, Python has a lot of libraries, and Python is going to help us out even in this case. How do we do it? Train underscore test underscore split is the method that we are going to use, and it has to be imported through sk ski learn. We we can pronounce it the way we want. Uh, dot model selection model underscore selection, and this is what is going to help us out in importing this method. Now there are three very important parameters that we need to understand here for this method. First one is training size, train underscore size. We can specify any value between 0 and 1. If you specify, for example, 0.8, that is going to be 80% for the training set, and rest will go to the test. We can use train size. We can specify this clearly. And there is another thing called as a random state. What is this random state? This is an integer. It is going to be the seed for the random number. Now, uh, this has to be test size. I made a mistake. So if you are not specifying this, you can specify this. Since we have specified this, we can be we can leave it free. Don't worry about it now. Now, what is the next step? We need to code for the splitting of the training data set and the testing data set. How do we do it? Train underscore x has the x features for the training data set. Train underscore y is the response variable for the training data set. Test underscore x has the x features for the testing data set test underscore y is going to be the response variable for the testing data set. Remember these points, and here is the uh, simple approach that we follow towards coding it. From SKE learn, uh, SKL learn dot model underscore selection, import train underscore test underscore split. Now we have imported it. How do we do it? Train underscore x, test underscore x, train underscore y, test underscore y. We have got the method train underscore test underscore split where x, y, train size has been passed as an argument here. So 0.8. So 0.2 gets automatically given to uh, the uh, validation data set, which means 80% will go for training, 20% will go for testing. A random state equal to 95. This is the seed value that we are using. Now what is the next step? OLS has to be used. What is OLS? Uh, we have already seen that. That's a least square method, ordinary least square method that we are using. Now we need to calculate the correct values which is going to be collected in the variable the salary underscore lm equal to sms sms is what is the import uh, uh, alias name sms dot ols train x comma y and fit now this fit is going to help me in completing the estimate and it will move the result to the variable the salary underscore lm now i am printing it that's all the model is built training is done we have got the estimate and now what is to be understood in this very simple I have got 3,194 rupees variation per percentage. Every increase in one percentage will get salary raised by 3,194 rupees. That is it. This is what we have built in the regression model. I am going to show you a complete code here. This is the complete code that we have explained to you step by step. We have imported. 
next step we have get, we have obtained the i mean we have set up the uh, printing options clearly we have read the file then we are just printing it and then we are uh, importing the stats model then we are adding the values to it it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's easy for us to understand so the complete stuff is explained here for you to understand clearly and i'm going to show you the code as well right now so that you can go through it now see the code out here see the code out here the import is all done now i am setting the print options as i told you we are uh, reading the uh, csv file we are re reading the csv file with the read underscore csv option that's the next line uh, so the values are all set appropriately and the reading has been done and it's moved to the df file df is nothing but the data frame now we need to see if uh, the first 10 values or 5 values or whatever is getting displayed properly we can see that i have made it uh, a percentage instead of cgpa so it, it gives me a better uh, understanding on the output as well so i have made it percentage so i am just scrolling through the data set for you to understand uh, things better now i am displaying uh, the first 10 values this is to obtain the information on the data set i have then imported the stats model library as sms and next step is i am going to add a constant one into the uh, one of the columns because i need to do it as intercept is not available by default and then i am doing the uh, part of uh, training and testing allocation so that's done once it is done you can see that uh, we are getting 80 percent allocated to the training data set and 20 percent to the test now we are getting the ols invoked here properly ols method invoked here properly with the train underscore y and train underscore x as the parameters and fit is given to get the complete estimate done and once you print it that's all you can see that the results are available in front of you and it says that the inference is for every one percent increase in the cgpa i mean in the percentage you get 3194 rupees more in your salary that's it i hope it was a interesting session only thing is you need to try to do your machine to understand things better we are going to learn more in the next session which talks about the classification problems thank you